Hey y'all, in this video, I'm going to show you the beginning steps that I do when performing a lash lift service. Remember, a lot of these videos that I do upload on YouTube do connect to my online trainings. I do have an online lash lift and tint training as well as a lash extension training. Both of those trainings are $50. If you do want to learn in depth to a lash lift or how I do lash extensions, you can check out my website, www.chiclashesla.com. Um, so, of course, before you do a lash lift service, I always recommend performing a lash bath. However, in most lash lift kits, they do come with like a cleanser, which is usually step one or step, step four, depending on the kit. So either you can perform a lash bath or you can use the cleanser that comes in the kit, which you would just use like either microfiber brushes or lint wands to cleanse the lashes with but just because i like to be safe than sorry um i do like to perform a lash bath because let's just say that you don't get all the oil or dirt off of the client's lashes with that cleanser that comes in the kit you're pretty much going to waste your time when you do a lash lift because if there's any oil or any type of anything coating the lashes the solutions from the lash lift kit won't get on the natural lashes and you won't get the proper lift so just to be safe than sorry, I always recommend a lash bath with, with an oil-free soap. So, of course, once you're done with your lash bath, you always want to make sure you dry the lashes pretty well. And then for a lash lift, uh, you will see some people who don't tape down the bottom lashes. I always do just because I have had it to where one of my clients, she had really tough eye a tough eye shape. And it was hard to tape down her natural lashes to where it wouldn't get in the way of the rod. And it was just a mess. So if you can, whatever method is your favorite, whether it's with a gel pad, whether it's with tape or gel pad and tape, always tape down the natural lashes when you're doing a um, lash lift, the bottom natural lashes. So of course, I like to use silicone gel tape. I do also have this tape a part of my brand. It's a super non-sticky, sticky tape. So once you take it off, it doesn't pull or hurt on the natural lashes. So um, I do like to add tape as well to the top lid just because a lot of glue is involved with um, lash lifts and the less mess you have to clean up the better. So I do apply tape to the top of the lid so that the rod can go glued to the tape instead of to the eyelid. So like I said, it's just less mess to clean up at the end. And then um, because this rod has not touched anyone yet, it's been clean and disinfected, you can use the uh, brush from the actual glue from your kit to apply it to the rod. Of course, once you start applying the lashes to the rod, then you would use microfiber brushes as you'll see me do here in this video. Uh, so of course, when you're going to apply the rod, first you want to measure and see what size rod you're going to do, whether it's small, medium, or large. And again, I do teach that in my online training. But for her, I am using a medium. Her lashes are kind of like, kind of long, not too much. So I'm using a size medium. And then of course, you want to just apply pressure to both ends. Sometimes some people's eyes get really triggered and watery with just doing this step. So sometimes you will need to use a fan as you're applying the rod. But for her, it was pretty good. And also with this kit that I'm using... It does dry pretty fast, so I didn't have to use a fan for her. The kit I am using is the Beautiful Brow and Lashes kit, or brand. They have um, all the stuff in their brand for lash lifts. Uh, and as you see here, I am using now a micro swab when I am going to apply the glue to the rod because her lashes will be touching it. And every time I dip into the glue, I am getting a new micro swab, so you want to make sure you're doing that. Now, when gluing the lashes up to the rod, you want to work in sections, especially if you use this same kit. The glue from this kit dries extremely fast. It is a professional kit. So if you're a beginner, I wouldn't re recommend this kit um, because, like I said, it's, it's advanced with the glue drying and with the processing times of the solutions. Uh, so you just want to make sure you're fast when you're doing a, a lash lift with this kit. In the online training that I do um, have on my website, I do have other kits that I recommend from other brands that are not as, as, as advanced as this one. You can check that out in my training. Um, so like I said, when you're moving on, you're just going to keep getting a new micro swab and adding more glue, and you always want to work in sections. Also, the tool to use when lifting the lashes. In this video, I was using a tweezer because I couldn't find my metal lash lifting tool. Um, but also they do sell those like little plastic, um, 
they have like one flat end and one end that has a brush with this kit if you're a beginner you want to try this kit i would recommend using that other tool i also have a picture of that in my online lash training so you can know what i'm talking about it's like this little plastic thing. If you look it up on Amazon, it'll be like plastic lash lifting tool. You'll see what I'm talking about. Because this glue dries really fast, you, as a beginner, you would you should use the other one. Because when you're lifting the lashes um, up, gluing them to the rod, the brush part of that tool that I'm telling you will automatically separate them. Now, because, um, because the glue dries so fast, you see how I'm going in here and I'm separating the lashes? sometimes if i don't do it quick enough the lashes will lift and that's when i'll have to go back and add more glue like you saw me do um but usually i can work pretty fast to where i still have some time that it's drying to be able to set their, separate them like right here but like i said if you take a, a while because you're a beginner when you're gluing them up i recommend the other tool and not a tweezer or the middle tool uh, but if you're able to do it then try it like this. I personally like to use a tweezer or a the metal tool because I feel like I could just get in there better. Sometimes that plastic one, it just gets too sticky with the glue or it doesn't get in deep enough to where I can separate them well. But whenever you're doing a lash lift, you have to make sure you separate the lashes and have them all facing up straight evenly because the way you glue them is the way they will stay once you perform the lash lift. So again, you want to make sure everything is nice and separated, nice and straight. As you can see, her inner corners are a little um, shorter. Also on her right eye, she has most of her inner corners gone because of a um, some damage she has done with her lash curler. But, you know, there's nothing I, re I really can do for that. Um, in that situation, I have had worst case scenarios where some clients come with like half of their eye without eyelashes. In those more um, worst case scenarios, you do want to tell the client like, hey, if you get this lash lift, one of your eyes is going to look great because you have all your natural lashes and the other eye is going to look a little crazy. Do you want to do it or not? And it's up to them. I did let her know and she was okay with it. Of course, at the end, it's kind of tough because at the end, they're going to be like, oh, it looks so crazy. And, okay, well, yes, it is. But hey, I told you, you know, so you always want to make sure you have communication with your clients because sometimes they'll turn around on you. But you know, there's nothing you can do when they did the damage themselves. But as you can see over there in that corner, she has very, very little lashes. They're very short. They're barely growing. But either way, at the end of this, uh, the lash lift looked great. It was just her inner corner. So just make sure you communicate with your clients. Don't be afraid to communicate. If you don't, it's going to go bad in the end. And always point out any anything you're seeing wrong in their lashes. If you see gaps, if you see broken lashes, make sure you take pictures before you uh, begin the service and let them know and show them so they won't be like hey you did this to me you always protect yourself and be like no look this is what i see do you want to continue this is my advice and and so forth so just make sure to always cover yourself and again you see here um always go back with different micro swabs when you're adding the glue to the rod and yes you can add glue on top of the natural lashes it doesn't um stop the process